So, during these days here, I think we have heard many fascinating and very important stories about passion and about achievement. So what I want to do then is to talk to you about what I'm passionate about, at least one of the things I'm passionate about in life, and that's human evolutionary genetics, which is about asking questions about where we come from as a species, how we are related to other species on this planet, and how we humans that live today are related to each other. And traditionally, of course, the disciplines that try to address such questions is paleontology that studied the bones of human ancestors and archaeology that excavates stone tools and other traces that humans had left behind. But what you do as an evolutionary genomicist then interested in human history is to try to look for those answers and questions in our genome by the, studying the variation among humans and study differences between the human genome and other genomes. And what I would like to do then during these few minutes here is to review with you some of the important insights that I think have come from studies of the human genome about the evolution, or evolution of humans over the past 10 or 15 years, and then leave you with perhaps one of the interesting questions that drive some of the field today. So the first long-standing question that was, one was able to address with molecular studies of our genome was a simple question, who is our closest living relative? And it was very clear, of course, that it was one of the great apes, either the bonobo, the pygmy chimp, or the chimpanzee, or the gorilla in Africa, or the orangutan in Asia. And the answer is very clear. Humans trace their ancestry back, if you look at DNA sequences in our genome, to common ancestry with the two forms of chimpanzees in Africa. And we're very close to them, turns out. If we look at the DNA sequences that we can align and find a matching sequence, they're just about 1.2% different. And that translates in time to in the order of four to seven million years ago, back to a common ancestor. And another interesting and important thing that we have learned by studying the genomes of humans and apes has to do with the amount of variation that we find within the species when we compare individuals in these species. It turns out that if you look at genetic differences among humans and among chimps and among the other great apes, what you find is that humans are unique in having very little variation. So if you compare two chimpanzees, random chimpanzees, no matter where they live in Africa today, and two humans, no matter where they live on the planet, the two humans are on average two to three times more similar to, other, to each other than the two chimps. Irrespective of the fact that there are probably only around 200,000 chimps in Africa and seven billion humans, and we live all over the world and not only in Africa. So that then clearly shows that something unique has happened in human history that has not happened in the history of chimpanzees or gorillas or orangutans. And that is that we trace all people who live today, trace our ancestry back to rather small population rather recently in time. And we can learn more about that if we study this rather limited amount of variation that we then have in humans geographically and see how it's distributed around the world. And if we do that, what we find is that we find the most variation in Africa. And outside of Africa, although perhaps as much as nine-tenths of all humans live outside Africa, we find a lot less variation. And of that variation outside Africa, if we look at the genetic variants we find there, almost all of them have closely related variants inside Africa. So it's really a picture of where a, there's a most variation in Africa, part of that variation has gone out and colonized the rest of the world. Those variants, of course, have closely related variants inside Africa, and in addition, there is variation in Africa that hasn't left. And we can also sort of gauge the time since that, whoops, sorry, I have to go back. Um, so from a genomic perspective, I often like to say that in a sense, we are all Africans either we live in Africa today or in rather recent exile. And we can also estimate the time back to that exodus out of Africa, and it's only around 50 to 60,000 years ago. So you may then ask, if it's now 
so that we all are so closely related and trace our history back to an African population rather recently? How can it be that we look so different when we look at each other and that we can actually often look at each other and rather accurately guess where people come from or their parents or grandparents came from? Well, if we think about that, I think it's useful to remember what Ben Carson alluded to the first evening here, namely that if we think about those features we then look at, those are things as skin color, hair texture, facial features, features that are very regionalized around the world. They are all on the surface of our bodies. Right? In addition, there are such some such features that vary with region in the world in our gastrointestinal tracts that have to do how we deal with food that we ingest. But they are all at parts of our bodies where we very directly interact with the environment. So it's easy to imagine that natural selection has changed in quite rapidly. So in contrast then, if we think about internal organs, that is how the brain looks, how the liver looks, how the kidneys looks, there is no one who can say where a kidney comes from in the world by looking at it. And this drives home the point, I think, that those features that we so much like to look at in each other and that unfortunately still have so much social weight in many societies, they are not only superficial features, but they are very recent features that have been added to our biology. So these are the type of insights that have come over the past 10, 15 years from studying the human genome and the genome of our closest relatives. But before ending then, I'd like to bring up at least one question that today drives the field and I think that will concern us in the next few years. And that is then to try to understand that genetic revolution in our history that happened, started in Africa somewhere 100, 200,000 years ago, when fully modern humans appeared for the first time. Humans that were essentially like us, that started producing art, at least art in a form that we as contemporary humans immediately, intuitively recognize as art, that started producing technology, that changed rapidly and became regionalized in the world, that started colonizing the whole planet by ex exploring across water where you don't see the other side. How can we hope to, in the future, find the sort of biological background for those behavioral changes? Well, we cannot do that by comparing just to chimpanzees and other apes with whom we share common ancestors several million years back. We will have to go to our closest relatives in all categories, which are actually the Neanderthals, with whom we share a common ancestor something like three or 400,000 years ago, and which became extinct something like 30,000 years ago. So that's then why my group is now using technology that we developed over 20 years or so to extract fragments of DNA from such fossils and combine that with new DNA sequencing technologies that allow you to rapidly sequence many short pieces of DNA to try over the next year or two to puzzle together a rough draft version of the Neanderthal genome. What you then can do is compare that genome to the human genome, the genome of chimps and other apes, and look for features in our genome where we all today are identical at live, but are different from the Neanderthals and where the Neanderthal is identical to the chimps and other apes. Because those features then go back to genetic changes, to mutations that happened very recently in our history, in the last few hundred thousand years. And among them are features that made this development of human culture possible, development of human technology, that allowed us to transform our own history. And by that also then much of the history of, of much of the biosphere of the planet. So that's one of the things that I hope this field some of you will deal with in the next few years. Thank you for your attention.